First at four, two breaking stories. A shooting at an in-home daycare in Dearborn leaves two children in critical. Police investigate a dog attack involving a young boy in Detroit. Also had Governor Snyder responds to a Michigan State police controversy. Will he fire the director who posted comments about the NFL players who kneel for the national anthem? Ben. Karen, the 90s, somebody else's problem now. Fall finally arrives, but is there going to be a little bit more chill than we can handle? That's all right now. First at four. Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. It was a heartbreaking call for help from a home in Dearborn. Two very young children shot at an in-home daycare. The victims rushed to the hospital. Families left wondering what happened. Let's go live to Rod Maloney, who is at the scene with the very latest. Rod. Yes, hi, uh, Karen. Good afternoon. We're in Harding Street here in Dearborn on the west side. Take a look behind me. This is the house where it all happened, a fairly nicely appointed small little house that was being used essentially as a daycare by a woman who uh, lives here. Now, we want to show you some video that we just shot within the last half hour. And this is video of Dearborn police taking items out of the home. And you'll notice that it looks to be uh, a number of long gun cases, rifle cases. And we're told that the homeowner here is a hunter, but they seize those weapons. But we don't know what is in those cases, nor do we know what was in other cases that they took out of there. And we also don't know what kind of weapon was used to actually shoot these two children who were aged two and four. And the Dearborn Police Department late this afternoon confirming that it was a toddler perhaps as young as two or three that shot the other two children after finding the weapon here inside this house. The 911 call came in about 1020 a.m. and the uh, the first responders were here very quickly and then moved immediately to get the children to the hospital where they are in critical condition right now. We talked to a number of people uh, starting with one of the uh, family members of the people who own this house and also Chief Ron Haddad. Let's hear from them. We're going to pray that these uh, two young kids are going to be okay. It, it, however it shakes out, it's a tragedy for our entire community. And uh, this isn't something that anybody plans to occur. So I would just say that at this time, we just want to hope and pray for the best for the young people involved. And the rest will take care of itself. I'm very shocked because I don't know all the details yet. And, and so, you know, I'm kind of blown away right now because, you know, my kid was in that house at one point in time and so as I we've gone there for birthday parties barbecues and so you know I'm I'm pretty shocked and that's one of the things that we're finding in this story here and that is a number of differing accounts of of what goes on in this house and who these people are what they do whether they like guns whether they don't like guns whether the hunting played a part in this uh, much to discuss coming up in the next couple of hours here on local four news at five and six we'll have the full update coming again on local four news at five reporting in dearborn rod maloney local four all right we'll see you a little bit later at five then thank you rod we're also following another breaking story on Detroit's west side. That is where a 14-month-old boy was mauled by a family pet that was just adopted 10 days ago. We are told the dog is a 6-year-old Gordon Setter, and police say the dog had the little boy's toy in its mouth. And when the child tried to grab that toy, the dog attacked him. The child was rushed to Children's Hospital with a bite to the face and side of the head. He is in serious condition at this hour. We'll also bring you a live update on this story tonight at 5. Critics are calling for the director of the Michigan State Police to resign after a controversial post on her Facebook page. Colonel Christy A2 shared a meme that calls football players who protest the national anthem, quote, millionaire ingrates who hate America and disrespect our armed forces and veterans. She has issued an apology saying it was a mistake to share the message and that she is sorry for offending anyone. Today, the governor's office says he will not ask her to step down because of her record as an outstanding public servant and because she publicly apologized. Moving to the first forecast, we sure hope you enjoyed that last blast of summer because fall is making a comeback. 
you know, this morning on my run, ba ba I was going to say Bailey, Ben, I just felt that, that cold air just coming on in. You can just hear everybody saying, ah. ah. It is pretty nice. It is so comfortable out there. Temperatures in sort of that middle ground between the 90s that we were sweating out yesterday and what is still yet to come. This is not the extent of the cold air. We're 78 right now at Metro. We did sneak up into the low 80s. In fact, we're there in parts of the south zone right now. But with that lower humidity, this is just such a more comfortable afternoon and a noticeable drop in temperatures too, anywhere from 10 to 15 and even more degrees colder, 17 degrees chillier than yesterday, almost 20 degrees colder in Howell than the numbers we were looking at at four o'clock yesterday. So here's the slide tonight as we go from 78 at six o'clock to temperatures in the upper 50s by midnight and we still have a ways to go. Wait till you see the four zone forecast that has those lows that we're going to wake up to. It's all in a few minutes. Karen. All right, thank you very much, Ben. Vice President Mike Pence will be flying into Metro Airport in about two hours and then headed to Bloomfield Hills for a Michigan GOP dinner. If you happen to be driving in the area, you definitely want to watch out for his motorcade. Things are definitely going to be slowed down. Tomorrow, the Vice President meets with Governor Snyder and business leaders in Auburn Hills to talk about tax reform. Meantime, at this hour, his boss, President Donald Trump, is hoping to shift the focus to taxes away from yet another failure to repeal Obamacare. He is pushing his new plan from Indianapolis. Kimberly Gill is in the newsroom with the highlights for that plan. Kim. Hi, Karen. Good afternoon. The president just laid out that plan at the Indiana State Fairground. He says the plan would lower rates for American businesses while giving the middle class a break. Here's what we know about the framework of the deal that has been in the works for many, many months. The plan would drop corporate tax rates from 35 to 20 percent and also shrink the number of individual tax brackets from seven down to three. The estate tax would be repealed while preserving deductions for mortgage interest and charitable donations. And the standard deduction would nearly double to $12,000 for individuals and $24,000 for those filing jointly. This afternoon, the president also denied the plan would only benefit the wealthy. We're going to cut taxes for the middle class, make the tax code simpler and more fair for everyday Americans, and we are going to bring back the jobs and wealth that have left our country, and most people thought left our country for good. Now, after not repealing the Affordable Care Act, the president is expected to try to get Democrats on his side to pass the tax plan. So, Karen, we'll see what that side of the aisle responds to and what they say uh, in terms of what the president outlined today. Until then, we'll send it back to you in the studio. All right, we appreciate it. Thank you, Kim. Okay. Well, they say, do what you love and the money will follow. You're about to meet a local businesswoman who turned her love of chocolate into a thriving business. She had some help from the Great Lakes Women's Business Council, and our Paula Tutman was there for a truly sweet celebration of success. When you walk into the Sweet Thoughts kitchen, prepare to be amazed. Look at these beautiful chocolates. They look so delicate, and they're so beautifully wrapped. I want you to take a closer look. That's not wrapping. That is artistry. But we all know it takes more than just talent to make a business. And Lisa has figured it out. Of course, her involvement in organizations like the Great Lakes Women's Business Council has really been pivotal because of the way they've been able to really help grow her business. I'm so pleased that I've been able to MC their luncheon where they honor other businesses and organizations that are helping to grow women's businesses. Oh, wait a minute. Oops. Wait one second. Please help me to welcome our mistress of ceremonies, the truly incomparable Paula Before we get going, though, I want to take you back. And that's back at the kitchen where Lisa Walker's artistry begins. She started off in construction with her husband, believe it or not. We drove together from West Bloomfield all the way downtown, and we spent probably 12 to 14 hours together a day. So I needed some, an outlet. <laughs> Lisa took a chocolatier class and got hooked. She found a flair for turning chocolate into art pieces. Beautiful, fragile, delicious, with sinfully outrageous flavors. Lavender, sweet potato pie, curry coconut, um, wild orange, um, chambord and raspberry. But the real appeal is how she spins chocolate into glass. Well, not exactly glass, but it looks like it. Delicately hand-painted, hand-splattered, hand-crafted, hand-sprinkled. All edible. After she fills her chocolates with ganaches, the next step is releasing them from the mold, where she can customize colors and shapes. And look, 
there's that glossy glass look. All edible. What really helped her get going, though, was the support she got from the Great Lakes Women's Business Council. They have helped me to accelerate my business. They have helped her spin one beautiful business. All edible. Well, another great conference, and what a great debut for Lisa's Candies. I mean, honestly, I think she's got a pretty delicious... Mm-hmm. Definitely a delicious future ahead of her. <laughs> My mouth is full. Paula Tupman, Local 4. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Paula. Still ahead, it was one of the biggest scandals in pop music, but is all forgiven for Justin Timberlake. Stick around for trending stories. Also, heartbreak after Hurricane Harvey, what these pets are waiting for and where they may be headed. Up first, the growing corruption scandal in college basketball, the future of a legendary coach now in big trouble. We'll be right back. Modern a growing college basketball scandal has claimed its biggest name so far with legendary Louisville coach Rick Pitino's job in serious jeopardy. Today, the university announced its place Pitino and the school's athletic director, Tom Urich, on administrative leave. Patino, who makes more than $5 million a year, is not getting paid while on leave. The FBI announced 10 arrests yesterday, saying athletes and their families were paid to steer the players to certain schools. Patino and Yurik have not been charged. First at four, we're also on top of stories, making headlines all around the world today. Let's start in Afghanistan, where insurgents claim Defense Secretary James Mattis was the target of a failed Taliban attack this morning. Hours after his plane landed, rounds of ammunition were fired toward the Southern Guard Tower at the airport in Kabul. An Afghan woman was killed, 11 other civilians wounded. Mattis's visit was unannounced and is the first one since President Trump announced his new Afghan strategy to send more U.S. troops to that country. Meantime, in Puerto Rico, aid continues to flow into the country after it was devastated by Hurricane Maria. But are the supplies arriving fast enough? Members of the Puerto Rican National Guard can be seen assisting local police to distribute water and helping with security at gas stations where gas is being rationed. Puerto Rico's governor had this to say about the recovery effort. We're making an effort to make sure that water gets to the places where uh, you know, the, the flow is not getting to and uh, that we make sure that, that, that people have those. Uh, food is, is critical, uh, so we're making missions uh, with FEMA and uh, on our local government efforts. Communications on the island still spotty. Roads filled with debris, electrical power may not be fully restored for more than a month. Meantime, many families are still feeling the effects of Hurricane Harvey in Houston. This is a pet reunion pavilion set up for pets that got lost or left behind during the storm. Families can come to the pavilion to find their missing animals. Right now, the Best Friends Animal Society is caring for nearly 400 dogs, 100 cats. If they are not claimed by the end of October, they will be taken to an animal shelter. Ben is back, and I guess you could say so is fall. Right? Or kind of? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it feels I mean, a little bit fallish. We're going to see temperatures that are almost spot on average, which is some. It is a nice relief. It's been kind of hot. Did you run faster and farther today? I did. I felt like the wind beneath my wings <laughs> was a little chillier. I liked it. Well, good. <laughs> we could help you out. Uh, and everybody's going to get to feel this relief, not just for one day, but it looks like for an extended period uh, coming up in the forecast. So we did have some showers that actually did get scared up with that front uh, that rolled through this morning. Didn't really amount to much, and now that they're gone, the clouds have moved out. We've seen some sunshine. There's some high clouds in the west part of the state, but generally tonight, it looks like we're going to be mostly clear, and that's going to allow temperatures to drop. So we'll go from sweating it out at night uh, to temperatures that are going to be on the chilly side in a couple spots. But the showers that are down here to the south, not going to be uh, something that we're going to be contending with, even though we need every drop of rain we can get. We've also gotten rid of the humidity. Dew points in the 60s and even 70s out here to the east, but we've got 40s and 50s on top of us. Those dew points, very dry air, and we'll stay with that for the foreseeable future. Gorgeous shot looking back towards Belle Isle from downtown Detroit. Temperature 78, and with that low humidity, extremely comfortable out there, and a noticeable wind, too, out of the west at 12 miles an hour. So as we look the, uh, forward into the forecast, there's really not a whole lot to look at in the short term. We'll be mostly clear tonight. Temperature will be the story. Take us all the way through Thursday. But once we get into Thursday night, we'll start watching out here to the northwest. Uh, there is going to be a little disturbance that moves through. 
that gives us at least a chance of a scattered shower, but amounts are going to be pretty paltry. Very similar to what we saw today, I'm talking hundreds of an inch. Definitely not going to bust that pre drought that we've got going on uh, in our west and south zone. You can see by noon on Friday, there's going to be some residual moisture that may swing through our north zone and into the thumb. Uh, but that's the outside chance. It looks like the better shot is going to be coming overnight and into very early Friday morning. 50 degrees tonight. That's the city low temperature, but look at some of these numbers in our four zone forecast starting in the metro zone. We'll call it 51 in the city. The airport will be right at 50. There's already some upper 40s here in West Bloomfield, Troy and Clinton Township. You get further away from the lakes, further inland, and that's where those numbers start to drop even further. Mid 40s is what you're going to wake up to in Lenaway County. South zone generally here mid to upper 40s. West zone lows by tomorrow morning anywhere between 44 in Flint and 48 in Novi and Canada. And so 50 is definitely the exception. It's mostly 40s here, especially in our north zone. 44 in Sandusky, 46 in Romeo, Macomb, Richmond. You'll be waking up to 47 by tomorrow morning, and that's not going to be the chilliest of the air. By the time we get into the weekend, those morning lows dropping even further, but we will see a string of upper 60s for highs taking us into the weekend, and then temperatures start ramping back up above average. Thank goodness no 90s in the forecast, but we will get warmer towards the middle of the next week. Karen? All right, thank you, Ben. Coming up, pop star Justin Timberlake could be giving the biggest show of his life. A lot of people are talking about this hot new report. It is trending and standing up to bullies. Two students stand together to honor military heroes and their efforts go viral. That story next. We are back with a dust devil caught on camera in Tempe. Look at this. An employee at a local TV station spotted the weather event just off of Interstate 10 yesterday. The tight spirals of dust and wind are pretty common in the Arizona desert, but they're not usually this big. Some dust devils have been clocked with winds as high as 75 miles an hour. See it with that blue sky behind it. I mean, it, it's a it's brilliant really, picture. Could you even imagine wearing contacts at that time? I can't imagine that seeing dust? that in person. Yeah. No, it would be Ooh. frightening. Well, in today's trending story, some kids over in North Carolina are getting attention for standing up to bullies. This 11 year old student was missing his older brother who's in the Navy, so he wore army fatigues to school and show support. Other kids made fun of him, saying the uniform looked like pajamas. So another student decided to wear his army fatigues to class in solidarity. The photo of them sticking together and sticking up for each other went viral, getting support from folks all around the country. Well, this story is trending today. We're talking about Justin Timberlake. Thanks to reports, he is finalizing a deal to headline the halftime show at the Super Bowl next year. Us Weekly says he has been asked to perform and he's currently working on a new album. It has been 13 years, believe it or not, since he was a guest star at the Janet Jackson Super Bowl. And uh, yeah, we remember what happened there. Remember, he pulled off part of her costume. The halftime show still has a five second delay, though, because of that incident. Nothing's confirmed yet. It is trending. It's going to have a lot more new information. Of course, we'll keep you updated. Also, new episode of The Blacklist kicks off another big premiere night here on NBC. It's a night of mystery, suspense and drama. The Blacklist starts at 8 o'clock, followed by a new Law and Order Special Victims Unit and a new Chicago PD. Then make sure to join Devin Skillion and Kimberly Gill for Local 4 News at 11. Still ahead, just looking at this video. Oh, you know, someone ran into a potentially stinky situation. Who was brave enough to help this little guy? The story's next. This summer in Charlottesville, Virginia, violence erupted, and a man from Metro Detroit was right in the middle of it all. You know, this is historic, people. This is something we don't see every day. The FBI says Michigan has long been a hotbed for white power groups, from recording hate music to trying to grow and expand nationally. And they cannot stop us. This is just the beginning. The defenders went undercover once before, and now we are back to show you what's really going on and what's changed in the local white supremacy movement. The defenders tonight at 11. Finally, first of four, one brave police officer went above and beyond to help one of nature's mm, least popular animals. He deserves an award for this. With the camera rolling, an officer in southern Maine came across a skunk with a McFlurry cup stuck on his head. Now, we all know approaching a scared skunk is a tricky situation. But Officer David McKinnon wanted to help. It took a little effort, which seems like it might make that skunk mad, but finally, as you'll see. There oh, we go. There you, see, oh. you're okay. Cup came off. Okay. The officer yep, does not okay. get sprayed. 
The skunk runs off. Beautiful end to the story. <laughs> and our newscast. I was talking to like a cat. I know. Good job, skunk. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us for First of Four. We are back at a half hour with Local 4 News at 5. Inside Edition is next. Have a great afternoon.